There's, the, there's this term. So I watch this. This shit comes up on Instagram all the time. But there's this term that says hoflation. <laughs> Not even fucking lying, dude. Body counts and hoflation. Hoflation. And they describe it as basically like the women that were that were that your grandfather had access to. Yeah. Were 10 times what a woman is today. But it takes more work to get them kind of thing. We, this is probably this is probably a bad road to go down. This is. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure out which side me and Jake are on of this. <laughs> Welcome to the Shoot Hunt Podcast. As always, I'm your host Ryan Avery. Ryan Avery. And my color commentator today is Jake Mushady. <laughs> yourself. <laughs> are you ready? I've been ready since 9 a.m., sir. How fat is your ass today? I knew that was coming, and, I, and I, I'm embarrassed. You know, because you, you never want to say it can never happen. I mean, you know, the chances of getting violently murdered by a bunny are low, <laughs> but, but never, never zero. <laughs> We're bringing up some straight bullshit. <laughs> Dude, if it ain't hunting clothes, my wife buys who, it for me. But your your wife bought that color for you? I just said, give me some Crocs. She's just way too comfortable with your gayness then. Gosh, I got a really long tongue. <laughs> <laughs> She's good. We fucking good Lord. Well, we're going to talk a little bit of, we're going to cover a lot of things in this one. Okay. And, and, and I want to throw this out there. People, I think they believe that. We do a lot of research. <laughs> <laughs> that we're very, that we're very knowledgeable in subjects. Well, I, I, Jake is like, I'm. You know what? I'm knowledgeable in bullshit. So, <laughs> the Jake is very good at the actual process and making it all sound articulate. And I just sometimes it's flipped. Sometimes I'm interviewing him. Sometimes he's interviewing me. But we're both good at the color convers the conversator. No, what is it? Color commentator. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Anyways, we don't do any fucking research half the time. It's why I walk in. He says we're doing this, or I say, "What about this?" And we're like, "All right." So that's because you're fucking Tay Tay. You get the red carpet rolled out. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I come in and Jake's. You know, sometimes the shit goes wrong, and Jake's not as talkative. And sometimes shit goes right, and Jake's super talkative. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he stays up till one in the morning researching shit, and then yeah. you really don't know what the fuck you're gonna get. Ah, uh, shit. But well, today was a one a.m. kind of day. But it served you well. Yeah. You got what you wanted out of it. Yeah. <clears throat> now he's driving to Salt Lake. <laughs> Lucky him. <laughs> All right. So let's got cover it. Well, yeah, I'm going to interview you, right? So what? Uh, tell us about it's fucking almost go time for hunting. Greatest time of the year. September 21st is the day today. This is the second podcast we're recording today. And uh, I know you're leaving for a hunt and then you got all kinds of shit planned. So make sure you tell us like the exact locations of which units you're going to all the honey. And holes. what you, yeah. What you think, uh, what you think you're going to kill this year. Oh, I'm going to kill three bulls. I'm going to kill three, six points. You fucking think you're going to kill three, six points. Okay. I'll, I'm going to kill two for sure. I'll preface this with, with you're the one guy I know that puts all the days in and sees all the animals, but rarely shoots something. Me and Jim, Jim does this. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, the same thing. So, you know, it's like people, this is like a caveat to this too. What's irritating in the hunting industry is I think people need to start being frank with the kind of hunting they're doing. I don't give a shit if you have, it's not about being jealous. I don't give a shit about the money you have and you need to be honest about where you kill shit because uh -huh. you're giving these up and comers the wrong sense of what's going on in the hunting. You mean world. like public land versus high yes. fence and things like that? Like somebody's going to go out and, and again, I don't, you made the money. I go kill whatever you want, wherever you want. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest about telling the story. Don't go kill a freaking 370 inch bull that you paid fucking 25 grand for and act like you went into the national forest and killed that thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very irritating. It's very like it to me, it's like the early primos where they're going to pay big money to kill these bulls and, and they could fart and a fucking bull would come in <laughs> to where it, that's anyways, that's a caveat. Or the outfitter is sending you a picture of your bull before you get there. Yep. And, and again, <laughs> I am not against that. If, if I was a multi multi-millionaire, I would do both, but I've been on both sides. I've shot some good bulls, uh, outfitted high end hunts. I've shot some Good bulls, not quite as big, and I appreciate those bulls ten times more mm. than the bulls that were, you know, bought and paid for by somebody else. You mean like the one you shot fucking nine miles in from the truck? Yes. <laughs> like I look at that bull almost every day, <laughs> and, and it just like comes flooding back. Yeah. So it's, anyways, that's just a caveat. Tell the 
tell the story. Tell what happened. Everything oh, that the, I fucking have. No, the, I'm just saying, tell your oh, story. Yeah. If you do the $20,000 hunt, fine, but say, hey, and don't act like you packed it out three miles. Fucking when there's a UTV right off the camera pit or right <laughs> off the picture. That, that's just a pet peeve of mine. All these it's, bulls. That's something different than, than all of fucking social media, whether you're looking at tits and ass or whatever it is that you're looking at. The pe- people are always showing the best mm-hmm. of their lives and the best of themselves or altering themselves to look a certain way. Filters. And- Same thing. I mean, just, you know, it just comes back to be fucking real. Then once, once in a while you have somebody that goes the other way and they just show you the train wreck that they are in life, Yeah, <laughs> which I like a good neutral ground. Yeah. Anyways, just tell the whole story of your hunt. That's all I ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, all these hunts will be on public land, mm. all three of these. But anyways, I have a hunt that I'm going with my, my daughter's boyfriend drew a really good Idaho tag and me and Luke are going next weekend down to somewhere in Idaho to hopefully film him shooting a good, his first elk. Nice. So he, all I care is it's a six point and yeah, it's in trouble. And we already know there's a shit ton of bulls there. Yes. We have Intel from somebody else that just went down there bow hunting. And in three hours, he found 20 bulls. So, mm. but so, another picky motherfucker that didn't shoot one because it wasn't big enough. Yeah. I said, well, how close was the first one? He said, oh, I was like 40 yards. I said, what was it? <laughs> ah, it's just a 306 point. Most people be like, oh, fuck. Fling. yeah. If the sixth point shows it's all. Like, you know, the thing is, if you can hang a ring on it, it's a point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, me down That's there me. using gravity, making it flat. Oh, shit. You know, I don't care. <laughs> uh, so we're headed down there. Uh, the opener, I have a another tag in Idaho for me that opens mid-October. And uh, I'm headed down there. I'm going to shoot a six point there. So, so we remember all this. You're shit. not even going to say a name of anything. Not even a region. It's in Idaho. Nothing. Just it's I in fucking Idaho. Idaho. It's a good tag. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I've shot bulls in there before. I've had other people. Sh- Anyways, rough uh, cu- rough country though, right? Oh, it's it's one of the best. You're going with Jim. Yep. Goats. Yep. Are you taking goats? Uh, the the first one. Yep. Okay. So it should be both times with Jim. I don't want to give the spot away because I hate spot burners, but it's a good unit in Idaho. We killed bull- bulls there before. It's very, very rugged. I don't think it's quite Selway breaks rugged, but it's it's more about the elevation. Mm. And like I said, I'm gonna kill three six points, so that'll be the I first. I fucking one. hope so. Then I got, I'm going to Wyoming. Got a Wyoming tag going down there late October. And I have two trips planned. Hopefully, the first one I kill the six point. You better kill it the first. And then time. I got to get back, and then we're going to Montana. I'm gonna kill another six point. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Montana combo. Gonna kill. <laughs> the funny part about it is, is this is the first year that I'm really thinking about elk sticks. Mm-hmm. So Jake has a dude that fucking makes top secret, top secret dude that makes the best fucking elk sticks I've ever eaten. Yes. And he just told me today that he's all out because I've been trying I, to hit him up lately to yeah, get more of them. Yeah. So I said, we're driving a whole fucking elk over there to get elk sticks. Just for sticks. These are like, uh, it's not like a, a, a Slim Jim. Well, they're refrigerated. They're extra wide for her pleasure. For her. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> but they're fucking, and this will sound like stupid, but they're they're, they're meaty. The they're, texture is fucking, it's yeah. this big granular texture, and yeah. it feels like you're fucking eating meat. Yeah, they're not dried out like a fucking Slim Jim, but they're not like a fucking sausage or a brat. They're not over salted like a Slim Jim. Like it, like he'll do jalapeno cheddar. There'll be chunks of cheese in there, and uh, teriyaki and jalapeno cheddar are the main ones we tried so far. But he's got Does know, he have all more? kinds of flavor. Oh yeah, you can almost pick any kind of flavor you want. Yeah, he is. Uh, <clears throat> that dude's a gem. So you you ought not fucking say his name. Why do you like some like some maple mustard? Sounds delicious. <laughs> like. Bacon maple. You got the vinegar. You got the you got the sweet. You got the, I don't know. <laughs> you can try that one. <laughs> huh, maple mustard. I just made it anyway, so the goal is to kill three bulls, take a whole damn bull to that dude, make those sticks, and we'll pile in a few deer along the way. And then where, where are the deer sprinkled in this year? Well, the first part of the Idaho one is got the deer tags open. Um, I'm going to go hunting around here for deer in November, and then Montana uh, mule deer. Hmm. I've never seen a whitetail buck. You haven't? On public land in Idaho. Really? Really. You know, the place we went, like I seen bucks two days in a row until you guys went and then. Yeah, I'm bad luck. Me and Mason saw some, a little buck. Yeah. 
Huh. But you've never, I would almost rather take a whole white tail down there and then a whole mule deer for those sticks. I bet they'd be better. Mm -hmm. Just guessing. Hmm. And so deer here and then deer here. I have a regular deer tag for mule deer whitetail. Then I bought a second whitetail tag only for Idaho because I'm going to whack one because I've been thinking about these meat sticks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and also we need to get a, we need to put a body in a freezer for the haha ha coming yep. up. Jake's got to shoot a forky <laughs> so we can get a ha ha. You just in. said you want to fucking meat deer. So just well, I'll probably shoot fucking whatever. Shoot a doe. Yeah. So I'd rather try to do, I'll try to, I can't say I'll do this because I would really rather shoot a doe than shoot a little buck. But if I see a decent little white tail buck, so we can cape it. We're, that brings us to the point we have the ha ha going on, the half ass hunting academy. Yes, half ass hunters academy. Yeah, and uh, there's go on shoot to hunt dot com and sign up because they're they haven't started filling up because it's people you know as procrastinators. Yeah. But we're only taking thirty in the class, so it's something that's probably going to sell out. At, yeah. Right after the and, first thing. And year. Mountain Ops just joined as a vendor. Mountain Ops, you can go look at all the vendors. You can add Mountain Ops to it. So mm -hmm. we're going to have quite a few vendors here. Just going to have a lot of knowledge. We already talked about it on another podcast. A lot of knowledge. So go check yeah. it out at Shoot to Hunt. Yeah. May 4th, 5th next year. Solid dates. There's more deer in there. I'm waiting for the next part of the deer. So there's more hunts in there. There's deer here. Deer here. Deer in Montana. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. So we're going to go back over to way over in BFE, Montana and whack some deer and <laughs> jake's dude, we are different in the way we look for deer because jake said oh there's some pop pop him and bucket mason we're done <laughs> what well, one was a small for the other one was decent one was decent one was small no well, i don't you, think either one was small like the, but the one was, got shot and then the other one walks out right in front of us like <laughs> you're fucking already going down there dude we're already going down and we uh what happened mason's Something happened to Mason's back. Long story short, I had to carry the whole second deer out myself. But it was fun. You know, it, was it is. And almost every one of these will have a video element. Mm -hmm. And the cool part is, is you know, you're, you're dead and gone. You want to have, not necessarily people remember you, but you want to have your family be able to go see what you you did in your life. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this will be, from here on out, it should be cemented forever. Good, bad, or ugly. Yeah. And there'll be some good, there'll be some bad, and there'll be some fucking ugly. Yeah, I've seen plenty of ugly. Yeah, and it's not, I don't want to sugarcoat it, and I know we'll get heat for some of the stuff we do, and because hunting's hunting. And the problem is, just like you go back to YouTube or Instagram, and you always see the best. Well, I've seen the worst, and you never see that play out in hunting. And to a point, we can't be grotesque with it, although fucking start shadow banning us. We're going to show a hunt how it happened. Mm hmm because I don't like the BS part of it. It never quite goes how it's planned. Never. And I think that uh, being flexible and having maybe a multitude of plans or locations always makes you more successful in the end. Be willing to give up your original plan if there's mm -hmm. no elk on that fucking hill that you've been scouting for three months and the elk are there every day. All of a sudden, yep. they're not there. I mean, you got to fucking move on. Yeah, was Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face and yeah. hunting will fucking punch you in the face hard. Yeah. Or weather comes in, whatever it might yeah, be. That's what I mean. It's like, oh. <laughs> it's just not about the animal. If it, if it was that, we'd be way more successful. There's, you got to fucking deal with weather. If you have livestock or just a long walk in or heavy pack or your guns fucking not actually zeroed. A new camera guy. You don't know what to do with yet. New camera guy. Yeah. It's going to be interesting how, uh, oh, Lukey. Luke, you've never been backcountry hunting before, have you? <laughs> We've been trying to get him geared up. He's been buying some Stone Glacier stuff. Yep. Spent a little bit of money there. And now he's trying to, he literally trying to con, he tried to con us into paying for his backcountry food. Yeah, he tried to, it is funny too, because me and Jake had the exact same response. Yeah, like, uh, do, do we feed you when you come to work here? Yeah. Well, what the fuck is the difference? And he's like, well, it's cheaper. It's well, these damn millennials. Well, well, <laughs> he, I think he's a, is he a Zer? Yes. Oh fuck! He's it's the boy, damn yeah. Gen Zers. Yeah. He, he he looked at a freeze dried meal costing twenty bucks. He's like, oh shit, I can't afford that. He tried to tell me that he's he brings like half a Costco in here every Monday, and he says he's eating for five bucks a meal or no five bucks for the whole day. He's so full of shit. He wheels shit in in a fucking shopping. He cart. does. He takes up all the refrigerator space. Yes. 
and then he makes meals that sometimes smell good and sometimes stink like shit. Most of, dude, he put broccoli in the fucking air fryer. Oh my god, it ruined the whole <laughs> shop. The whole shop smelled burnt ass broccoli. Yeah, so he wants to, he wants us to cover his food <laughs> bill for fucking two months, basically. Yeah. Well, I got some shit for him. Yeah, we got we got some leftovers. He will have plenty of to eat. Whether he wants to eat it, that's on him. Yes. Uh, well, might have some flavor or textural issues. What but do you, it, but do you it'll have, have the calories. You have Dude, I got a whole box of peak. Like, the box is this big. What flavors? Fuck, I don't know. I'll bring them in. You could go through them first. <laughs> All I really want is a three, if you have three bean chili. Or three bean chili. Mm. We'll, leave, we'll leave him the, the jailhouse stuff. Yeah, leave him the fucking. <laughs> the government cheese. <laughs> that's that's all of the other stuff. What's the other company? I keep forgetting the name of it. The uh, uh, Pinnacle. No, the one that's been around forever. God, right on Mountain top. Up or uh, Mountain House. Mountain House. Yeah. yeah. Mm. No. Yeah. We've already discussed Mountain House ones. biscuits and gravy is good. That is still. I like that better than the Peaks one. Yes, but not better than Pinnacle Foods. No, there's nothing better that I've ever had than the Pinnacle Foods jalapeno cheddar oh. biscuit. Biscuits and gravy. Even there, just the name. You know how you, I guess you're reading the menu right at a restaurant, right? And they the way they name it fucking sounds good. Well, the mm-hmm. Pinnacle does a good job of that too. And you've got it. We've we're discussing something we already discussed, but we're getting close to go time, so it's got me excited. <laughs> you'll eat shit in the back country, and you'll be like, "Oh, that was okay." Yeah. And then you'll try it at home, and you'll be like, "Holy shit, that's disgusting." Yeah, shit tastes better in the woods. Yeah. So if you like it at your house, you're gonna love it in the backcountry. And it can be uh it can be difficult to eat in certain situations when you're out this. there. When I get hot, I fucking don't like to eat. Yeah, so you gotta bring shit that you really, really like. Yeah. We make some mean trail mix. I haven't heard this. I have to like we know <laughs> Well, one of these hunts we're gonna bring some. So one we go to the these, store. These hunts, what about next Thursday? Bring it in. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like that, you know, it's high here's, calorie dense food. Here's the deal. You make that, put the time and effort in. Uh-huh. I'm going to go to Winco and get the shit I usually get, oh, and I'll man. bring it in. We'll see which one's better. Dude, if you make your own gorp, you, you can't, like you can't beat chewies. it. You can't beat it. All Speaking right. of, we have that fucking, why didn't I get those stickers? He did the Lickies and Chewies deal, and I didn't order the. Yeah, gummy bears. The stickers. Sucker. I'm going to make a note. Lickies, Lickies and, and Chewies. Chewies stickers. For sure. Um, this is nothing about actually what we're talking about next Thursday. So next be the 28th. We're doing a, uh, basically a bag drop of what we're taking for the initial hunt. That's going to be fun. Yep. Everybody likes a good bag drop. This is going to, this is going to be the Ryan Avery. What do, what do we call the season? Early season, early season, but Ryan I, Avery early season. I got my shit dialed. It does not really change, but one piece, one piece. And I think if you really think about it, it's just that insulation piece that I only change mm-hmm. one fucking piece. People get all wrapped up about it. I use yeah. the same shit. Do we don't need to talk about? It. We'll talk about it next. I don't week. know why well, you may, you may, I wear the same shit every day to work. You make fun of that. Yeah, but I don't think you washed it. But the only reason I know you washed it is Jess probably did it because she's a she good washes woman, my so clothes. She, 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 she does a good job. She washes the clothes. I do a good job because I, sometimes I'll wear the same pair of pants two days in a row just because your pants don't really, you know, if you're not getting too dirty or whatever. I do the same thing with underwear. And it, oh, no. I'm definitely an underwear changer <laughs> and a shirt too. Uh, that she gets back because we get up in the morning, we go to the gym, and then I got that shit I wore, and then she's got the, the other. Side. Anyway, she does a good job. Do you uh, when you're hunting? Like we we can talk about this next week, but just real quick, <clears throat> you we discussed this. I don't take any extra underwear. I don't take any extra pants. I just take three pairs of socks. You take multiple pairs of underwear? Not multiple, just an extra pair, extra pair of socks. I would prefer to change my shit every day. Like the, the the stuff touching my skin, I also like to. I don't like the way the sleeping bag feels touching my skin. I can't sleep. I'm a weird sleeper. So you sleep with a long sleeve shirt? Yeah, I'll put a base layer on. Okay, just so it's not touching my skin. You and very so this fucking bag is like pristine. Mm-hmm. I look like fucking pig pin on fucking Charlie Brown. Yeah, and I don't give a shit. Yeah, <laughs> so it's different. I get cold easy. Too. I don't like being cold. I really if there was one thing I fucking hate. I'll be wet. I'd rather be wet than cold. I rarely get cold. Mm. So that makes it the same way. You know, he's got, you guys are big bonded. Like even in like over in Montana when it was fucking cold. Dude, the deer hunt was fucking cold. Yeah. It's like, I don't get cold. Even if I was in a bag, like we had a wall tent on the elk hunt. Dude, elk hunt wasn't as cold, but it was cold. The fucking elk froze overnight. Solid. Mm-hmm. It's just, I, 
once I get hot from hot, I'm not light, dude. I'm not little. I like stay fucking hot forever. Yeah. So it's a problem. Yeah. You have a lot of insulation. Insulation. I, I throw out a lot of heat. <laughs> like the sun. Well, we're supposed uh, to be talking about powder and primers and shortages. Okay. The state of the state of the union on uh, the beans and the bullets. Yeah, it's been a while since COVID. Fuck, is it already four years now? 2019, 2020, yeah. I think December this year would be the four year mark. Yeah, December twenty nineteen. Fuck. Fucking this went it's went by fast. Yeah, and it's still fucking people are still using it as a fucking excuse. Yeah. And the election's swinging back, so you see all these fucking losers with masks on. Yeah. Hey. The science is out. The shit don't work. Yeah. Take the fucking masks off. Yeah. They keep saying there's going to be more lockdowns, more whatever coming up here pretty quick. It but. truly will be telling yeah. where we're at in America. Yeah. The science has disproved all kinds of things about COVID. Number one is the fucking mask issue. Mm-hmm. Doesn't do shit. And then what the vaccine actually does for you. Yep. The pure bloods against the fucking contaminated bloods that are dropping from fucking mm-hmm. Whatever I don't not a doctor. Mark Luke is actually taking that shit to the next level. So here's a Gen Zer, and he you know he's in the dating game right now. He's trying to find him a woman. In fact, Luke, what happened to the last date? They they did good. He With probably his, don't want to share. Luke, do you not want to share your love life? <laughs> so he so so he actually he's like he's like we were talking about like a list of questions that you got you got to interview. You know, a woman now, a woman, a girl, however old, you know, he's 24. So one of the questions was if, if she was vaccinated or not, because there's a lot of shit going on about vaccination and pregnancy. Yeah. Reproduction. Problems. And in fact, your, your, your wife has seen that at her hospital too. And, uh, yeah. So now, now you got to ask your 24 year old potential girlfriend slash wife having kids situation. If, if they got the stick or not. Basically, it's a, are you right? Or are you wrong? That's yeah. the question to me. Yeah. Did you have your cells modified or not? Wow. That's a, I would not want to be dating at this point. Tough in time. time. Tough time. And there's, was, there's this term. So I watch this. This shit comes up on Instagram all the time, but there's this term that says hoflation. <laughs> not even fucking lying, dude. Body counts and hoflation. Hoflation. And they describe it as basically like, the women that were that were that Hopefully. your grandfather had access to yep. were ten times what a woman is today, but it takes more work to get them, kind of thing. We, this is probably this is probably a bad road to go down. <laughs> this is it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out which side me and Jake are on of this. So, <laughs> it, it, well, I guess we'll leave it at that. I'm, I'm forty, and I've been married. I've been with my wife since I was sixteen, seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm 46, 46, and I've been married for 26 years. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't want to go down that road again. Definitely not. I did like, t- it's funny, too, because the funny thing about women, is they always worry about you, like, cheating or something, right? She's got it all fucking wrong. If I was going to do anything, I'd just leave and go in the mountains just by myself. <laughs> Peace and quiet? Yeah, <laughs> not responsible for anybody else. T- Tanya has this thing. She's probably going to kill me for saying this. If she ever dies... Uh huh. Um, I can't marry anybody that she or I know right now. That's not bad. No, but I see her point, and I said, <laughs> I ain't getting married again. Every six months, hookers and blow in Vegas. That's what I'm doing. Every time I tell her that. Until like, one of those two things kills me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. That's it. You know, another thing just, but that's a fucking funny you said that. So another thing just come up and it was, uh, it was either Chinese or Japanese women. I couldn't tell you which one, but they basically, they were interviewing them about what it meant to cheat. And basically said, if your man goes with a prostitute, is that considered cheating? And dude, you'd be surprised at how they look at that over there. So you have a, a Chinese or a Japanese wife. They believe that if you go, if you go pay for the sex and you tell them about it, it's not cheating because there's no attachment no, really. To the woman. Yeah. They would rather you tell them what you were going to do than do it secretly and try to have a different relationship that could potentially, you know, ruin gotcha. the marriage. So they want... They, no emotional exchange. Exactly. They would rather you go, if you had some need to go do your thing, pay for it and come back and be done. Tanya doesn't think that way. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, definitely American <laughs> women do not share the same fucking views for sure. Uh, are we going to start calling this like Oprah or shoot the hunt? Motherfucker, I know. <laughs> It's all right to go off on some. Oh, fuck, it's fun. Yeah. Get our feel. Anyways, you know what side of the plate me and. uh, Hoflation. Hoflation is for the. (laughs) Hoflation. That's funny shit.
it, you know, when you're growing up <laughs> here in school, I'm sure it's the same way. The women, you know, that slept with a lot of dudes are kind of loose for the, the sluts of the, loose. <laughs> and the dude, the dudes didn't, it didn't matter. No. Well, it's been flipped now. It's like oh, yeah. the chicks are okay. They just have these super, they're just, they actually put a fucking name to it. Now they have body count. There was never such back when we were in school, you didn't talk about a body count. And I don't know who told me this, but there was a, a thing of, uh, I think it's syphilis, Texas state, it, Texas A&M. Yeah, yeah, Ford was telling us. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah like Texas fucking A&M. like 300 girls got syphilis from like four dudes. Yeah, so hopefully. That's it. The smallest percentage of the dudes are getting all the girls, and it's not the girls you probably want to get anyway. Nope, and like, yeah, and there's just a bunch of fucking tofu eating, fucking man bun wearing dorks having no, <laughs> getting no pussy at all. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord. We have really fucking Okay, that's enough fun. Um We talked about hunting. Oh, I, I wrote down Canfield here because I wanted to we talk about hunting elk and kind of getting a little bit prepared and we kind of followed along here with your with your weight loss a little bit. Oh dude, you know, leading up to two, it. Two two oh four this morning, by the way. Two oh four. Nice. Nice. I'm gonna hit sub two, not like ten years sub two during hunting season, I'll definitely get in there. And Can- Canfield is a local mountain here. It's 1.8 1. 8 miles, 1,850 yep. feet to the right, top. Right there. Yep. Um, so we kind of measure how long it takes us to get up that mountain to tell how good of a shape we're in, either you know compared to the last year or if you're in elk shape. And if you can make it to the top in under an hour, that's pretty fucking good. Dude, if you can make it under an hour, it's, to me, like you put some effort in. Mm-hmm. Where are you at right now? Oh, I've done it sub multiple times. And mine's a little bit, a tiny bit longer because I go a different way. Mm. So mine up and back is like 2.4 miles. Oh, shit. Yeah, because I come down and go take a left anyways. But I am doing it in about 58, 57 in there nice. almost every time. And I did it the other day at like 101 and I had 20 pounds, 22 pounds. Nice. So. The, you know what's funny is that 20 pounds you fucking feel it oh yeah yeah because you were doing under an hour wouldn't you do an hour and 40 minutes i did or i fi- did i did 50 four. like 52 pounds in 57 minutes yeah that's insane last year that's insane. that was good that was good shape that was right before we went to the fucking breaks and i gotta tell you if i would if i wasn't in that shape i probably wouldn't have made it up there yeah it's like there's something i don't know we had talked about that zone two zone three whatever before it's not like my air's there. It's your fucking legs. Mm-hmm. This like that. <clears throat> it's not day one of the hunt. It's day four. Mm. And if you don't do that kind of shit a lot, man, you really start sucking. And then you're like, oh, I don't really need to get to that place to glass. I mm-hmm. don't really need to go that far. And that's how you fucking don't see animals. That's what the outfitters tell you is being in shape is the number one problem with hunters. Yep. And fucking last year in the cell that this picture is where we were. Mm-hmm. If you see it on the wall in the video and <laughs> there is nothing nice about that place. Mm-mm. And there was no elk. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was about the only good thing that came out of it was the pitcher. The pitcher? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Because we lost the fucking bear hide. Yeah, that sucks. All right. So All we're right. going to talk about uh, one of the topics on our ammo deconstructed series was powder primers and shortages and how we deal with that. I would say that, you know, when we built that topic list, it was definitely more applicable back then because most powders were out of stock no matter where you went. Uh, we still see the remnants of these shortages and the fact that right now you really can't find large primers or large magnum primers almost anywhere. And that's CCI or federal. Yep, CCI 200, CCI 250, uh, Fed 210 and Fed 215, and of course the match versions of both of those. We just simply don't see them come around. Now 210s hit midway a couple times recently, and you could get a few thousand here and there. So I mean... There is some scraps kind of leaking out, but whatever it is that CCI and Federal, so CCI and Federal are both owned by Vista Outdoor, same company that owns Stone Glacier and so on. Blackhawk and freaking ATK. And all kinds all of kinds shit. Of spear bullets, I think. So you have one conglomerate there that's controlling the majority of the primers in the country that end up for reloaders. Now, reloaders, whether it be powder or primers, are really just getting the fucking crumbs, the scraps after the bulk goes to military contracts and things like this. We just see a little bit coming around, but um, small primers are easy to come by. 
Pistol primers are back in stock most places, but large and large magnum tend to be the big problem right now. There's really no good solution for that other than you got to jump on gun broker and pay too much. Um, we, we've been forced to do that during COVID several times, pay way more money than we should. Is there any like, cause it seems to be the choke point almost every time. Mm. There's no solution in sight. Cause it, isn't it also like kind of <clears throat> like, like utilities is kind of like the federal government has a, something to play in the prime. Yeah, so, so if you were, if you were to say today, Hey, I have $50 million. I want to start a primer production facility where all that's controlled by Sammy. There's a lot of political stuff that goes on there. I mean, I don't have all the details, but you don't just get to decide one day you're going to start making primers. Yeah, you have to have they're explosive too, so you have to and There's they have a, mercury and shit in them. They're they're yeah. not exactly eco friendly. Yeah, interesting. I always wonder. I wonder. We we didn't pin them down on that when we podcasted with them, but I wonder if Hornady is making their own primers. I don't. I don't, I don't know, but I'd be willing to bet they don't, but I'd be willing to bet they get first fucking dibs. Yeah. And you know, they probably have, I know they have a lot of Sammy connections too. They're one of the, there's like an inside fucking circle, dude. Like if you like those, 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 those super secret groups over in Europe for the dudes that wear the leather chaps and shit that shoot the, shoot the <laughs> birds with the shotguns yep. and they went to the right school and they all know each other with a handshake. That's yep. the kind of shit we're talking about for Sammy. And it's funny. The person that told us all that stuff, I didn't know that, but he kind of enlightened that it's like a fucking political fucking thing. It is. And that's bullshit. Yeah. And that's probably why, I mean, what type, there hasn't been enough primers for five years, right? At what point, does a person with money decide, hey, maybe I want to go ahead and create a primer production facility because there seems to be a big problem here. Whenever there's a hole in the market for a product, generally somebody steps in to fill it when there's an opportunity to make money. And there's a lot of money in the gun and ammo world and nobody is fucking doing it. At one time, Nemo was going to do it. Do you ever hear anything more about that? Heard a little bit about that. I also heard about a place that was in Texas that was going to start doing it. I actually got on a list with them. And that went to shit too. And it was a Sammy problem. So I think that might be the big doorway you got to step through. So is there a spec like a Sammy safe 65,000 PSI spec? Is there a spec for primers like that? Yeah. Oh, no shit. I didn't, no. I didn't even think about that till right now. Yeah. Do you know what that is? No. Because we're not in the inner circle. No. And also at the same time, like we'll have, you know, lately, ever, ever since COVID started, we do get we 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 love to use federal gold match primers, whether it be two tens or two fifteens, and almost everything that we do. And since match started becoming harder to get, large primers started to become harder to get in general during COVID. I think the quality has also went down with all of the primers. And maybe they're trying to make too many or what it might be, but we we get misfires. We'll get a guy that emails and say, "Hey, you know, I bought a hundred rounds of ammo for you. I had two misfires." Well, there's fucking powder in there. We don't make primers. We mm -hmm. put the primer in the brass. We do it the right way. They're seated to the right depth. You do it the best possible way you possibly can. Yeah, with the best tooling available. Mm -hmm. And I can't control if the fucking round goes off or not. So no. we often have to replace and, and lose money because of the quality of their products. And if you take ATK, who makes both of those primer lines mm -hmm. at their word, they're running 24 fucking seven for primers. And, and That's what they tell you. Yeah. So maybe there is some steps being missed. Maybe there is some quality control. You just, you yep. just never know. I personally haven't seen it since I left two fifties long time ago. I have maybe one misfire. That Very I rare. Remember. Yeah. Yep. So hopefully that trend continues. Yeah. And we all, and again, we're always using the federal federal match. If, if, if we have those, if we can, have you noticed like any during your load dev or just general talking to people, we could talk, ask Nick, the big difference between the metal, the match, and the standard two fifteens. Uh, as I understand it, the the weight is more consistent. It's also I've been told several times, and I don't have any. I don't know if this is true or not. I've been told several times it's the experience of the guy running the machine that determines whether it's match or not. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So, like, if the guy, like, because it's a man, it's you know, it's not all, it's not all an automatic process. Like I've seen videos or pictures where they. They put a powder residue over the top and they kind of scrape it and squeegee it back and forth, things like that before the anvil goes in. So there is a, there's, you know, it's not all automatic machinery. There's some human influence. Oh yeah. I thought it was like weight sorted <clears throat> out and like, yeah, they could be closer weights for sure. Like, you know, competition guys, bench rest level competition guys are weighing their primers for sure, you know, to, to, to try and get the best possible results. 
Interesting. Well, I hope that uh, that is like the Achilles Hill. If there is, usually you can find brass. Usually you can make a powder work. But if you don't mm. have primers, you're just fucked. Yeah, maybe that's how they're trying to control the market too. I don't know. I would hope that uh, a company like, you know, ATK, Avisto would cry wolf, you know, or not cry wolf, but cry, tell the population that, hey, the pu shooting public that we are getting squeezed by the government. Yeah, and I also believe that large, so large magnum primers are the smallest proportionally used primers across the the, 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 the array of primers, right? Like whether it be pistol, you have a, a regular pistol, magnum pistol, you mm -hmm. small rifle, magnum small. Those are the most used primers compared to large in general. Yeah, I saw some kind of thing a while back. It was like pistol ammo was like 10 to 1 to every other mm -hmm. ammo. So I imagine you're right. Yeah. But it makes you wonder, like the company just <clears throat> just to the east of you here, like where they pull their primers from. Yeah, well, they're definitely all mostly all pistol shit. And if mm -hmm. it's not, then it's usually small rifle. You know, I know I've sold, I've sold a big batch to them before that I got small rifle primers. Interesting. Yeah. So on the other side of that, the, the powder shortage, it used to be... You couldn't find even the shittiest powder in stock. This is, you know, let's call it six to 12 months into the COVID, right? When everybody just bought everything in sight. Now it's to the point where the majority of powders are in stock. Mm -hmm. uh, we have here, we have almost every Vitvery powder in stock. And so the Hodgson Extreme powders are still having issues. Uh, I do have a friend who has a friend who described, he works at Hodgson, he's one of the sales reps, and and basically described what we receive in the reloading world is just the smallest crumbs and scraps from what actually is produced and what goes into the real world. Real world being military, there's still conflict going on right now in Ukraine, and and they're shooting rounds all day every day. You know, so there's only so many powder manufacturing facilities. Like Hodgson Extreme powders are made in Australia. Mm -hmm. I've also been told at some point that all the powder actually has to leave Australia and go to China's port first before it actually is allowed to come here. I don't know what would cause that or what the logistics are, but I've heard that a couple times. Obviously, yeah. if China, you know, China's going to be consuming a lot of powder too. Yeah, and it's not just like, I imagine those facilities make more than just, you know, rifle mm. powder. They're making powder for other big explosives too. Yeah, I learned that. Uh, so when they were doing, when they were still doing the IMR Enduron powders, in Canada, they actually canceled. So that's the 7977, the 8133. They have since discontinued those lines. When I was talking to this specific Hodgen sales rep, which Hodgen also owns IMR. And just so you know, Hodgen doesn't actually make powder. Hodgen has the chemical recipe for H1000. And there's a place in Australia that makes it. Really? Yeah. So they're not actually, there are no extruded powders manufactured in the United States. There's some ball powder but not extruded powders. That's the stick powders. So n where, where does Vidviori made? In Europe. Europe. Yep. Comes over in containers. Uh, and then again, the, the IMR powders are made in Canada. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. So we don't make any of our own stick powder. So and it has to come through customs, has to go through all that yeah, shit. All that so it shit. probably sits out on a port forever. Yeah, and it just like the way the fucking, we don't have all the inside outs of the way the government works, right? There's, mm -hmm. you know, we don't know where the powder's going or what they're doing with it. Um, but when there's war going on and people are firing ammo, it's got to go somewhere. And the uh, the new powder that came out from IMR, it is completely gone, all of it. They don't have any more for sale. The, the, you mean the 8133, yes. 79? Yeah, that's all gone. Yeah, We have some left in the Connex back there, you know, some certain ones. But mm -hmm. I think we might have some 4166, some 4451. That might be it, though. And then like Rotumbo, H1000, 4350, <clears throat> the extreme powders, you're just hit or miss. Yeah, hit or miss. So we're still buying those powders from retail sources. We are not, we are too small in Hodgson's eyes to be able to buy extreme powders directly from them. There's just not enough to go around. We're at the very end of the deal. So if you imagine for a moment that we're making something like 2,000 rounds of ammo per day, that's not enough to get Hodgson's eye. Right. You need like a Hornaday or a freaking Nosler. Or yeah. Or you were already in the, you were already in. Yeah. Right. Like there are several small mom and pop shops that are reloading supplies that are still getting powder because they were, you know, they've been in for a long time. Did. Yeah. So do you think that, you know, obviously we're not, we're within a year of an election almost. So mm. do you think it's going to get way worse? Like it did COVID election 2020 ish, or be a little more flatlined? Be, it'll be interesting to see. 
I mean, you know, in in my opinion, once once debates begin and the two way arguments start, people start getting nervous, mm-hmm. whether it be for guns, ammo, whatever it might be. Um, the funny part I always think about that is you ain't winning that kind of a war with the fucking bolt gun. <laughs> Yeah. So you go out and buy all this slow powder. You're like, what? What are they really doing? Yeah. What? Are they, what's their thought process? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I, I imagine it's going to get. Right now, you could consider it somewhat good. I mean, I have two 15 hybrids on the shelf. That almost never happened. Even so, before COVID, it was rare that you could walk into a store and buy a keg of 570 or a keg of 1000. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's still rare today. There's like, there's Rotumbo. A guy texts me, "Hey, Rotumbo's at Black Sheep." This is a local sports, you know, mm-hmm. warehouse where we live. Um, so it's happening. I mean, the powder's out there. You just kind of got to get yeah. it, get it when you can, stock up when you can. And you can walk by those shelves like Black Sheep or North Forty or anybody any sporting goods store by your house, and you can see the ammo stock is there. Well, the ammo is yeah. definitely there, which is why yeah. you'll start to see the powder start to build up because the ammo would come first. Mm-hmm. There is still a black market for powder and primers, so things are still being sold on Gun Broker and other ways that were never normal before COVID. There are guys that made businesses and made a living off of sourcing it from one place. Guys were writing programs that would instantly buy powder the second it hit a website because they're coders. So they were always got there before you did. Yep. And then um, they were fucking up selling it and raping people yeah, I mean, on it. I mean, doubling the price and, and people were paying it because you had to. So we've never been that type of business. There were, there were times when we had a lot of the good shit and I could have went on gun broker and there was maybe actually, made a million bucks. There was a know. time you had a certain powder and i said look at this price mm-hmm. and, and i don't remember where it was at and to jake's credit he's like yeah we're not we don't do that yeah so yeah so i mean it still sucks um but there is powder there that wasn't there before so the powder is is in my opinion is not back to normal but it's not bad either who knows where it's going to go from there and of course you can't do much with powder if you don't have primers yep and and unless and unless you're shooting like an extreme rifle Man, you can. There's a lot of powders that'll get you by. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to have the 570 if you can find Rotumbo or H1000 26. I'm sure there's some 78, 28. I mean, yeah, wherever the reloader powder is going, Alliant kind of fell off the map there for quite some time, and they're still not really back on the map. It's not Alliant like the. Is that who makes Magnum, or is that their RL powders, reloader powders? Uh, reloader, Alliant reloader so 26, 26, 23, 33. Yeah. They're not. I tried to get an account with those guys. They wouldn't even hear me. But are you finding it to buy? No, we just don't. I don't even look for that. We have enough Vitvery and Extreme Powders in stock right now that we, you know, we cover what we're doing. And everybody's like on the super, super extreme. You know, you got to buy Hodgson. And man, if I had my druthers, I would take Vitvery most of the time. You could do a lot with 565 and 570. Just those two powders by themselves. You can cover... Mm-hmm. Everything in a Magnum bolt face or bigger. Yeah, and Nick's been running the shit out of 560 in a lot mm-hmm. of things. I know because we had like 800 pounds of it and just said it's almost so almost gone. gone. <laughs> and he's like, dude, it's it's really fantastic little powder. Mm-hmm. So. A little bit faster than 565. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And and I even ran 555. I think 555 would work in a lot of those mid range Magnums down into like the 65 Creed. What's it great in 300 WSM? It's actually yeah. made. It's it was made for 65 Creed. And it was be the most consistent and, f- and the ha- had to happen to be the fastest in a 300 short mag mm-hmm. with heavy bullets. Yeah. So there's a lot of good powder you can have, especially if you, if you, if what happens is people are set on, I got to have H1000, mm-hmm. I got to have Rotumbo, I got to have 570 and uh, don't be that curmudgeon. Yeah. yeah. Work with what you shit. got. Yeah. Bullets are looking good. Nos- nozzle is kind of coming around a little bit. Um, is there any bullets you cannot get? Burgers kind of back and forth. We don't uh, we don't have a direct count with Hornady because they don't like us. So we did a podcast with them. They still don't love us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we buy through a middleman that only sells to OEM of manufacturing of, of ammunition. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're called Black Hill Shooter Supply. So we get uh, quite a bit of bullets from them, or we find retail sources, things like that. Um, Hornady bullets seem to be pretty much in stock. Uh, burger as well there are a few as burger cycles through their calibers that they're doing you'll kind of run out a little bit here and then a little Mm. bit there Uh, but coming up to hunting season here there's really not much that we didn't have Uh, brass seems to be a bigger issue 
for example, like seven PRC has just crushed it this year, yeah. popularity wise. So, so ADG and Peterson are making the brass. Um, we do have a big batch of Peterson seven PRC coming in. It'll be sometime around first, second week of October. So keep an eye out for that. Well, correct me about brass is never in the history of bolt guns. Have we had so many brass manufacturers and still had still can't much have enough shortage well, of fucking shit. dude. More or population's growing every day, and the gun population is growing every day. Which makes me proud. <laughs> it is. It is a good thing. I mean, you, it's oh. it's a double edged sword. But the more gun owners we have, the more gun owners on your side. Yeah. All right, and we. What else are we talking about? That's about it. We talked about shortages, powder primers, hunts coming up. We can talk. We can always talk about nothing for a long time. That's right. <laughs> Uh, we could put, uh, like I told you guys, we are doing a, oh, what do you got oh, up there? Oh, base Luke map. wants to show his time. Oh, he did. So he did Canfield. We were just talking about. He's showing 44 minutes. Let's get a date on this. What's the, what uh, is the date? I don't see a date, Luke. What's the date? I don't He's know. He's quiet. It was probably a few years ago. Oh, that is that is a fast time. 44 minutes is extremely fast. You actually have to run parts to hit 44 minutes. On sub 50, you have to run the, pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> nice job, Luke. You went the easy way like fucking uh, Jake, but it's okay. Hey, he's probably like the other guys, though, that the moment you put any weight on their back, those tall, skinny guys just fucking peter out. Well, and the funny thing, he got lost. You see that? Halfway? <laughs> you see that fucking dog leg in there? A little zigzag, yeah. Yeah. He got lost halfway up. Uh-huh. <laughs> Luke, good job. He made a lefty righty. Luke, did you send us a subscriber to give away some rings? Yes, sir. YouTube subscriber. So we told you in the last podcast, every podcast, we are going to give away a set of UM rings, whether they're the <laughs> Premier or the Tika, to a YouTube, a shoot to hunt YouTube subscriber. And today's winner is <laughs> Luke. Just find it. Get it, dude. baby. I, hey, Patrick, I'm very sorry about to pronounce your <laughs> last name, but is it Crapfy? Oh, no. C crappy? That's Cra Patrick Crapful. Crapful. <laughs> I can't believe he, I can't Crapful. believe he, yeah, yeah. Well, Patrick, you want a set of rings, man. Crapful. Hit us up. Crapful. Crapful. Crapfy. Just get over the fact that it says crap first and then just say crapful. Crapful. Snapple. <laughs> Patrick, it's Luke's fault. <laughs> but you're gonna get a set of rings. Yes, sir. Reach out to marketing at shoot to hunt .com and uh claim your prize. If we messed up your last name, <laughs> blame Luke. Hey, get on uh get on YouTube, guys, subscribe, and you could be the next winner. Yes, sir. We need a thousand subscribers. Oh, that reminds me. Not only are we giving away rings right now, there is a live rifle giveaway. By the time this oh, hits, shit. the picture's going to fucking be updated. We ain't even pushing it. They said it. Thursday. Was that That's was today, that baby. True? Yeah. So we built a 7 PRC custom UM Tika rifle. On that website. Right fluted now. steel barrel. All the good stuff. And we're giving it away for free. Yeah, and it's so easy to sign up. Jake found this badass little plug-in. It's user-friendly and easy. Just shoot to hunt com. At the top, it says rifle giveaway. It says enter your email address, and then you click some buttons below that. It's like follow us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram. It does it for you. You just click it, and everything is worth a certain amount of points. And you can sign up with as many emails as you got for as many points as you want. And we don't, somebody asked me this the other day on there, we don't sell your information. No, we don't sell shit. Mm. Just use it for ourselves. All internal. And that'll be given away. Uh, we're taking unlimited entries until the end of September. Wait, no, October. end of October. Mm -hmm. And then the program literally is set up to pick a winner. We'll do a, an announcement deal. But yeah, win yourself a custom Tika 7 PRC rifle. Yep. Very easy. Six weeks. Well, you have 39 days left. It tells me right on the little. Yeah. How many entries so far? 164. 164. Those are rookie numbers. You got to pump those up. We haven't even announced it to anything. Anybody yeah, we yet. Really We're still waiting on a picture of the That's because gun. I have a picture of a 7 PRC Tika build we did on there, but it's not the actual rifle. So we did start the giveaway already, but uh, that picture should be updated by the end of tomorrow, Friday, the 22nd. 22nd. Of course, they're not really going to care. I mean, it's going to look badass, but you know, you're winning a free fucking rifle. Yeah. Tika. <clears throat> it's going to look yeah. sexy. Manners, game warden, long range stock, a still barrel. 
SS Pro brake, all the good stuff. Tell us about the rifle on the table, sir. If you go to uh, YouTube and you subscribe, you can see all of our videos. We have, a, we also keep hearing from guys that you keep getting uh, inquiries about. Make sure every episode goes on YouTube because their work computers block them from going to shoot to hunt. Never even thought that was a thing. I yeah. got three or four now. Yeah, yeah. To where they can go to YouTube, but they can't go to shoot to hunt because of the wording. It's weapons and shit. Yeah, I used to have when I worked for the Prevo, the Volvo deal. You know, it was something similar. Certain keywords would trigger the block. Never even heard of that. It was actually when you were on a secure network, rather than if you were on your MiFi or whatever. It kind of didn't matter, but. So we are making sure that every episode does go on YouTube, so you can just uh, so you can, so you can listen at work. Yes, sir. Well, we're okay. The rifle on the table is the sister of the rifle from the previous uh, episode. Seven PRC. Let me get the length on here. Seven PRC plus P. Twenty-two inch eight twist barrel Vesper action. It has a Nomad TI suppressor. Atlas Cal Bipod, another Manners Long Range Hunter stock. It is our medium unknown munitions, bottom metal and mag. Hawkins Ultralight Rings and another Night Force NX-8. Is, what barrel is that? That is an Ace Steel Spiral Fluted Barrel. Five? Uh, that is, that is yes, that is a Sporter 3 Contour, otherwise known as a benchmark number five. It's a 700 <laughs> muzzle finish. It always confuses me. Yeah, <clears throat> it's really, it's a Bartline 3B. Is okay. the coordination between the Sporter three and the Bartline three? Yeah, it looks like like if what I seen looks like a number five taper, but yeah, I believe that these two the sister rifles are headed to Africa very soon uh, on a hunt. We did load development on both. They actually both shot the same load and both shot fantastic. Another uh, dead air, that dead air can on there, Nomad. Yep, dead air Nomad mm. Ti. We may or may not hopefully be getting a. I put in the credit app for that fucking dual laser. True Print 3000. Oh, really? I put it in yesterday. I told Cliff. He got all excited, so we'll see what happens. Those look cool. I just want to get that and see how much it's going to take. We're, we want to get a titanium printer in the shop, start doing some fun stuff with it, but it is a million-dollar machine, literally. Million-dollar yep. machine. So you better have a use for it <laughs> quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's just say if that did happen, we would be making suppressors, but not for all the tactical guys. No, hunting. For hunters. 1000% for hunters and think about, you know, suppressor coming back around the barrel would be your, you know, without adding link to the rifle. We want to reflex. It works. Yeah. Or figure out something new, call it something new. <laughs> I got Anyways, some, I got some names. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, claim your, uh, Patrick, claim your rings and get on YouTube, get on the rifle giveaway. Yep. And if you have any suggestions for podcasts, or if you have anything you want to reach out and talk about podcast at shoot hunt.com. Uh, we monitor it every day. Thank we got you. the voicemail little thing on the fucking website. They oh, can I even keep go on the, about that. the contact form. If you guys want to suggest a podcast guest or even suggest yourself, get on the contact form or do the little voicemail thing. Yeah, we're going to do a Q&A. We're going to have a Patreon up. I just got to finish it up. And we're going to have a monthly q and It'll be me, Jake, and sometimes form. And uh, lots of questions. We got to read. We have a, I don't know if you read it. We have a comment we got to read about the only time you don't want to use a match bullet. Did oh, you really? read that? No. What is that? Oh, sh- I don't, oh, we got we'll next episode. It. All right. But it, I, I, we, I was going through it and I was like, no way. Anyways, go read our comments on our podcast about hunting bullets. That guy has a very unique reason why you would never want a match bullet. Huh. All right. Thank you. Podcast, shoot the hunt. Thanks for listening. <laughs>